All right, so this is Grishel Brand. Um, this is one of the decks that took a little bit of flack with the Faithless Looting ban because it was a, car, a deck that leveraged Faithless Looting. However, I think this is hopefully going to be a good example of decks being their power level defined by the context of the metagame in which they're being played. I think overall, this deck actually gets a lot better post Faithless Looting Ban. And in large part, that was because this was a deck that wasn't quite powerful enough to fight through everyone having, you know, five to eight sideboard slots dedicated to Graveyard Hate. And so while the Goldfish potential of this deck has definitely gotten worse without Faithless Looting, the overall power level it sits in in the format, I think is a very reasonable spot because it no longer has to worry about um, as much graveyard hate coming out of people. So this is one that I'm excited to see. We've got a mix of insolent neonates, um, extra collective brutalities as additional discard outlets. And then we've got ransack the lab and Knights whisper here as a way to still generate and see some extra cards game to game. So overall, we're gonna see a little bit less, less cards every game which is definitely going to reduce our consistency a little bit, but not having to deal with, uh, not having to deal with uh, as much graveyard hate should hopefully be a boon for us. RNL, thank you for the 12 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. This deck can still theoretically kill people on turn two. You go Insolent Neonate. This deck can still theoretically kill people on turn one. Pitch Simeon Spirit Guide, Neonate, discard your Gristle Brand, pitch another Spirit Guide, Gorio's Vengeance. Yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and keep this. This needs uh, this needs some more mana, but this needs this needs a land or a Simeon. This needs a, a land or a Gorio's Vengeance. So I've got. I've got two Gristle Brands, which is actually pretty okay here because I have one to throw in the bin, and then I also have um, I also have one to throw the breach later. Should we just draw a bunch of lands? So I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice this to discard this and draw a card, and then yeah, that's uh, double double lands are like pretty fine here. So like if we get to breach this Gristle Brand, that's like something we're pretty okay with. So I could technically go for it here because I can, with the green card drawn, I can splice the Gristle Brand onto the nurse, the through the breach onto the nourishing shoal here. So it looks like, it looks like we're playing the waiting game. That is an excellent card to have if we're playing the waiting game. Let's take a peekaboo at what's up here. Yep. Morn and Pelly. Now, the little bit annoying part here is my opponent's gonna get to four lands, which means they're in cryptic command range, which kind of sucks. But at the, at the same time, like, my opponent's just like, not really doing anything. So like as long as there's not any pressure in play, the fact that we're just like playing Drago here is like not a big deal. So like they have like a Vendillion click here, that would be really bad for us. But so long as long as they don't have a meaningful clock in play, like them playing a bunch of disruption doesn't really matter. Our goal here is to kind of draw a couple of lands so that way we can go end step, splice through the breach, and then untap, cast actual through the breach. Could be a scape shift deck. I don't know. They could just, my, my gut says like they're just a, 
they're just a, a teamer like mid range or control deck because generally speaking, Scape Shift doesn't play Mana Leak and Spell Snare. Land. Perfect. I kind of wanted an untapped land there, but beggars won't be choosers. I would like that untapped land, so let's go ahead and pass back. Uh, yeah. So, them, give, them giving us an untapped land here is actually pretty good for us. They shuffled away the top card of our deck, but, like, now I can end step through the breach. Because the way through the breach works, the creature that you put in doesn't get sacrificed till the beginning of the next end step. Okay. They're down to four cards in hand. Draw another breach. So if I shoal and they counter it, I'm out the shoal and a worm. I was kind of hoping to draw a land there so we just cast Breach naturally, but I guess that would bake us out of a Breach then too. I think I'm just going to YOLO it. Oh my god, did I just click the wrong thing? Oh, it's been a while since I've done that. That's a yikes. Well, I had intended to splice through the breach onto that. But uh, here we are, so. So you can pay for and put this effect onto another spell. So they would have had to counter that or we would have gotten to put a thing into play. And now they have a Jace, so like Jace plus Snap, this game slipped away from us most likely. There's a chance there's a chance they had a counter for this and then had a counter if we get the land to do this again next turn, but that would have made them have two counters instead of making them have just one. And then every every turn they have with Jace just makes us incredibly unlikely to actually win the game. So I don't know. There's a there's a chance like a lot of these decks don't have that many counter spells game one. Opponent's playing a bit of a brew, so it's obviously tough to know exactly what's in their deck list, but I'm not gonna concede till we're out of both these breaches in our hand. Big eyes, thanks for the four months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. This is the matchup where there's Pact of Negations on our sideboard for all the all the counterspell decks. The Pact of Negation matchups, you can just like Pact them and kill them that turn. Counter, counter their counter for free. They're almost they can scred they can scred our Gristle Brand at this point, which is kind of funny. So we're going to do the end step through the breach, untap breach them. Well, they started feet sealing me. Okay, I'll be really surprised if anything happens. If they're feet sealing, their hand's probably stacked.
And I'm going to concede when this one gets countered. And again, if I wouldn't have misclicked, we might have gotten it through earlier, but I did misclick, so now he's crying over spilt milk. Yep. Counter spells tend to not be very good in modern in general, but they're very good against this deck like we're playing here. So opponent lines up pretty well. Especially, and this is one of the reasons why the Faithless Looting Ban was so good. The Faithless Looting Ban takes decks like this that are that were pretty obnoxious, and it takes them and slows them down to a point where you can actually have a chance to interact with them in a lot of games. Like, obviously, we can solve some blisteringly fast draws, but a lot of the time, the opponent's actually going to have a chance to be meaningfully interactive with you. So I think I want this extra brutality. I want the Pact of Negations. Um, what do I want to trim here? Trimming one Borborygmos is fine. Usually, you trim at least a Worm or a Borborygmos, and the teller on whether or not you leave the Worm or the Borborygmos is if breaching a 15-15 Worm is good, you leave the Worm in, which it is going to be good in this matchup. Um... I brought in one extra discard outlet, so maybe I could trim some neonates. In order to fit in enough cards to like see a lot of cards consistently, I had to trim a lot of the things that you are generally sideboarding out with this deck. So sideboarding gets a little bit trickier. I'm not quite sure what I want to be doing exactly. This feels like I'm removing too much. Like, this deck doesn't have that much card drawing anymore without the Faithless Lootings. I'm just going to trim around the edges. <laughs> nice, Paula. Yeah, Boar could be good just for increasing threat density. I don't, I don't know. I feel I feel like um, I put boar in my sideboard for the Jund matchups mostly. And I feel like... I feel like having boar and Pact of Negation both in my deck is not where I want to be in life. I feel like that's like... If I, if I want boar, then I don't want Pact of Negation. I'm like, I'm already struggling to like fit in four cards so like boarding in even more than that and diluting further does not seem ideal i do have graveyard heat here still though it's a little annoying stay safe and dry pelly Instead of me telling you you're wrong, Charles Kyle, can you tell me why you think Neoform is just better than this deck? The slow grind with the 1-1 one, one Menace. I think to articulate a little bit, I think Neo Shul Brand, especially with the removal of Faithless Looting, is the much better all-in, I'm trying to kill you with only one plan deck. But part of the appeal of playing this deck has always been that it's not just a Gorio's Vengeance deck. It's also a deck that has the Through the Breach aspect to it, which allows it to have kind of a, a diverse selection of strategies it can implement. All right, well, if they tap off these relic activations at any point here, we can uh, put 
put a gristle brand into play, so that's nice. Uh, I have not reviewed anything. pelly has been rating uh, some reasonable set reviews for the Warhammer stuff. Collective brutality. I think I, I think I'm in for that because in addition to these neonates are actually kind of sweet because they're like a discard outlet that like kind of sits here until I decide I want to use it, and the fact they're just like chipping away here at them is also kind of great. They have Menace, too, so, like, the Snapcaster Mage doesn't block them. Please crack your fetch. Rats. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think with the with the loss of Faithless Looting, this is not this is definitely pretty far from an all-in combo deck, which could honestly mean that like this Pact of Negation is not particularly appealing anymore. Veil of Summer, yep. Yikes. Got me. Yeah, right? Yeah, I don't I don't have the cards to escalate, I don't think, so I didn't. I wonder if that was a misclick or if they think they can block here. That's actually kind of sweet. This at this rate. Um so, yep. So I can, I can technically gristle brand here, right? Right? get I only get seven hits I mean it draws me seven cards yeah there's so there's a there's a Gorio's vengeance on top of my deck
so now a question is do I when I sack this what do I ditch do I ditch the pact of negation or do I want to the question I have to ask myself is am I pacting a force of negation am I pacting a force of negation because the problem here is I only get to draw seven cards with this gristle brand so like if I don't hit like there's a there's a good chance I don't get to fully combo here is the issue. Yeah, and I've already I've already made a land drop. Yeah, I have to hit Shoal plus Green Fatty. I think well like I guess I probably can't win this game. They have seven cards. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna YOLO it. We we here to YOLO it. Let's try and run a little hot. I have to hit Shoal plus Worm here in seven cards. Do 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 we at least we at least we went out of the world doing what we loved. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a note to know. I might I might just delete this deck from the website. We're gonna we're gonna play out at least two more matches in this league, but that that felt pretty rancid. Believe it or not, this deck feels real bad. Losing losing that that consistency engine of like being able to churn through your deck there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of clunk up here at the top end hey dm let's get you a sword to go with that shield thanks for keeping me around for an entire year welcome back distinction one tef down one to go slow slow and steady Gods, God save us. The Tefries they print next summer won't be as annoying as these ones, these existing ones. Can you explain why... Fury of the Horde would have any more success than like what this deck is doing. Because that 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 build still has a ton of a ton of clunk in it and it still loses a ton of the selection that the these archetypes previously had. I feel like if I wanted to play a Gorio's Vengeance deck, I would probably with the loss of Faithless Looting, there's probably merit to branching out into like the Grixis builds for like is it Charm and Jace Fringe Prodigy at this point? Jace, Jace VP is a really good card. Hey, AJ. We're having a swell, swell afternoon. This seems fine. On the bottom, a land. That last hand could cast turn with Spirit Guide. You're not wrong. World Spine Worm on top sounds great. Breach Worm is generally fine against Jund. This will be a matchup where we bring the Lair Eggs in from the sideboard. Little baby Tarmogoyf. Uh, second Spirit Guide lets me Breach Worm next turn, right? Yep. Assuming, assuming no interactive shenanigans from their side. Yeah, I don't even, so like, to give people history who are not familiar with this archetype, in addition to this build where you play like Worlds by Morn and the Shoals to try and combo kill with Borborygmos, um, there's also more, or 
variations that were structured differently where you just play Gorio's Vengeance through the Breach with Gristlebrand and Emrakul as your as your secondary as your secondary threat. And a lot of those were frequently Grixis in the past. So they killed this, but I get three five fives, which is like pretty decent. And the fact that they killed it by giving me a land means that if I draw an untapped land next turn, I can just breach another worm, which is great. Um, I would accept elves as a donation, but I do not expect that deck to be good anymore. Both, both Plague Engineer and... Both Plague Engineer and um, and Renin Six both give that archetype an incredibly hard time. Oh no, not Inquisition! Here's my here's my eleven drop and my five drop. Good luck, Godspeed. <laughs> speed. I don't think this deck is good, but moments moments like that are certainly great. Yeah, I I okay must be bugged. They conceded when they when they looked at it. The shoal plan is like pretty hard to execute here. So I think I'm going to cut some of those. Lightning Axe seems fine. I'm going to trim a Gorio's Vengeance since they're definitely going to have things like Scavenging Ooze post board. Uh, Collective Brutality doesn't accomplish a whole lot, actually. I'm bringing up Bontus. That seems, seems fine. Back in my day, you had to work for putting the big thing into play. Patriarch's bidding and Avatar of Woe was the top end. Avatar of Woe. There's a there's a name I haven't heard in a hot second. For people who are longtime modern viewers here on the channel, the deck we have coming up after this one's gonna be a little bit of a blast from the past. It's not it's not quite Kiki Court old, but in, in iterations like that. I, I dusted off Sahili Evolution. I try and kick the tires on that with Stoneforge Mystic after this. Sure. You've taken my Neonate. My, my Larrigan World Spine Worm Shell Yvonne, though. Yeah, I've actually got um, I've got three equipment in the main deck of it, and I've got a fourth in the sideboard for the grindy matchups because of blinking, blinking, and copying Stone Forge. I want to make sure we don't run out of equipments too quickly. Bob Fadon's pretty good here. I have a way to kill that. a pretty quick clock. Yeah, yeah, this is an ideal, an ideal style of game for Dark Confidant for sure. Old Bay Ray, thank you for the 10 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. That'll, that'll do, pig. That'll do. All of your Amazon fund money. Well, I appreciate it. Your Amazon fund money keeps me employed. We 
We do we do have an actual pig that floops now too, that is true. Morning Cole, happy Friday. Yep. There goes Night's Whisper. Uh, I have not, Rock. We've played some Just Guy Saheeli a long time ago, but it was before before War of the Spark. Mm, I guess we're just hitting land drops at this point, huh? It's like looking to cast a turn four pig. Hope it sticks around. Congrats and good luck getting all your stuff done, Ornell. Hey, Max, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Is Bubby? Yeah, just a whole lot of whole lot of sitting around and doing nothing. Oh no! And they take our toys away. Should have pitched my spirit guide in response, not giving them the satisfaction it is inquisitioning us. I assume thoughts he's gonna is gonna take Larry here. Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Readable colors for names in chat. So part of the issue, and I, this definitely is something Twitch could change, is that they don't differentiate name colors on dark mode versus light mode. So I'm sure there's a bunch of colors that look good in dark mode that don't look good in light mode and vice versa. Yeah, the obvious answer is they should just stop supporting light mode on their website. Just, just get rid of that inferior product. And if we get through the breach, we get to like hit him with the crystal pig, draw some cards. Two bobs, eh? Okay, well, this makes them. This makes them use the Nile spell bomb without drawing a card. All right, chat, they're down to six. All I'm, all I'm saying is, dark confidant. I just, I just need you to be a team player here, bub. I just, oh no, oh no. Serum powder and pull from eternity. That, that sounds adorable. All right, Bobby. All right, Bobby, just do them dirty. I'll take a blood braid and a fulminator, please. Inquisition, oh no. We tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter anymore. I think, I think this archetype, if you're going to build it in a post-looting world, needs to be uh, torn back down to the studs and rebuilt. I think the, I would be surprised if this nourishing shoal package is still is still reasonable i feel like it probably just puts too much chaff in the deck that you just can't afford to churn through you're not able to churn through without faithless looting consistently 
As sad, as sad as it makes me to say it, I think we're going to have to put this one out to pasture. Hey, Punchworthy. Thanks for the 43 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I mean, to be fair, I think this deck not being a thing anymore is a net positive for the format. If I'm being completely honest, while while I liked playing this deck, I think this deck was a rancid stain on the format and definitely should not exist. Yeah, so Wizards doesn't really print busted reanimation spells anymore. This is the TLDR. Like, cards like Reanimate and Exhume, those are like old design mistakes that don't happen anymore. Yeah, this style of deck still exists in Neo Brand, and I'm of the opinion that that, that that deck also shouldn't just shouldn't exist in the format. It's not, not good for the game. I'd say ransack the lab. Okay, so... Let's fetch a swamp. Gristlebrand, please. Perfect. So let's take the world spine worm. And then let's floop this little pig into play. Draw some cards. Draw some cards again. Attack with Gristle Piggy and friend. Draw some cards. Wow, we really didn't find a, uh, another Simeon Spirit Guide, huh? Awkward. Where, where are my spirit guides at, chat? Where, where are my spirit guides? Yikes. All right, so I have the entirety of my deck in my hand now. So we get to go cast this, exile a green card, splice, where's my desperate ritual? Splice my desperate ritual, pay with mana monkey, mana monkey. Exile, exile this. And then... We, we won't have to discard the hand size. We're not going to make it to on our end of turn. Exile this. Splice this. Exile a green card. This deck's so much easier to manage in paper because you just like sort your hand as you draw the cards. And we put Poppy Borborygmos into play and then Borborygmos discards lands to deal three. So like this is what this deck is trying to do. It's not particularly consistent at doing this anymore, but this is this is the goal. You floop, you floop your little gristle pig. You draw your deck, you make a bunch of mana with Thurishing Shoals and Rituals, and then you put a Borbregos into play, discard some lands, and kill them. That was a good old, good old fashioned turn three kill. I mean, you could technically still like neonate on one. Discard your Gristle Brand and then Gorio's Vengeance on two. 
Like, that's technically still possible. It's just you see less cards, right? Like, you have to have the Gristle Brand in your opening hand with the Neonate. You can't just, like, peel it off the top with the Faithful Saluting. So you get, you get a lot less looks. And I keep this on the draw. We got a Neonate. Like if I if I hit the second land, I have ransacked the lab to help me dig. My opponent's mulligan to three. So there's a good chance we get there. Good, good, good chance we make it through. Land relic. Just suspend search. Deal. Yeah, what the one lander versus bull to three. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Probably discarding the second Gorio's Vengeance here. So they're dead next turn. We get uh, Gorio's Vengeance back, Larig, and Larig puts in World Spider Worm. Look at that. That's running turn three kills. Yeah, one of the. One of, I was talking about you need to kind of tear this deck down to the studs and rebuild it. One of the ways you could rebuild it is with Larig. Just like, have just have more redundancy on your combo pieces, basically. Floop the pig, the pig floops the worm. You know, you know, easy game, easy life. I want to tell you the brawl video you made was very enjoyable. Yeah, I might we might dip back into that again between now and when rotation happens. And that's why it was so smart to introduce that on Watsy's part. Like natural, natural low hype time for standard having something else to do on arena is nice. We'll probably explore Brawl at least a little bit when a rotation happens with custom decks. Especially especially if they do the right thing. Hopefully they do the right thing for Brawl and ban Tefri and Narset as commanders. Those cards. Those cards ideally should not be commanders. Yeah, Singleton forces a uh, varied gameplay, which is nice. Especially in standard where you don't have just like a pile of redundant tutors. So Brawl, Brawl explicitly does use Planeswalkers as commander role, I believe. Pretty, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Brawl rule is any Planeswalker can be a commander. So we're going to keep this and we're going to move to hand size on turn one and discard this Crystal Brand. Should they also ban Ashiok? Why do you think they should ban Ashiok? Because it mills people? I could see that. Can we turn to them? That would make me incredibly happy if we turn to them. <laughs> Well, they think we're turned to them. I don't I don't know if we we're gonna successfully turn to them, but they they feel like they were dead. I 
We did it. We did it. We did it. Hooray. Do, 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 do. What if I just pull off the show plan altogether here if I don't think it's good? Just be a bit interactive post board. Just like plan to. Yeah, I think that doesn't seem unreasonable. Like, bring in stuff to kill their things and, like, plan to breach or Gorya's Vengeance the thing in. And I think something closer to this is probably what the deck ends up looking like if you stay just red-black. I do think there's probably merit to exploring, like, Grixis. I felt, I, I was pretty confident Grixis wasn't worth splashing into when we had Faithless Looting, but if we're restructuring the deck, I bet the restructure wants to involve those cards. Oh. Stand up here for a hot second. Hmm. I think I'm going to bottom that, actually. I have Larig and I have Gorio's Vengeance, so I think I'm just looking for, like, a Worm or a Gristlebrand at this point. Yeah, maybe Conqueror. There's a lot, there's a lot of different directions to take. I think... I think a lot of those directions, though, end up taking you to a spot where you'd rather not, you'd rather not be on the shoal plan anymore. Like, I think you just want to end up being like a Gorio's Vengeance through the Breach Larig deck. We're going back to Theros. Oh, that's true. Going back to Theros means we're going to get temples. Yeah, I believe, I believe that. I wonder what lands that means they're going to give us in the fall, though. Because that implies we're going to get a different set of lands in the fall. I hope they give us these in the fall. I hope we get Black Cleave Cliff, Sea Chrome Coast, the, the enemy fast lands from Scars of Mirrodin. I feel like these cards are like, the names on these are kind of generic enough that they could fit them in anywhere. Ally, sure, whatever, whatever this cycle is. The Scars one. That's why, that's why I specified this. As you will. My theory is that since Adamant using the same color in the spell is in the set, we could get a rare cycle of mono-colored lands. Maybe. <laughs> Be careful, Nivik. Uh, we had sub-only mode off to start yesterday because I played Warhammer on Wednesday. Twelve's probably on the low end. Feel like you probably want a bit more than that. Well, there isn't really an established version of this archetype now, Zara. So everything got flipped on its head when it lost Faithless Looting. So we're just like trying different things. I think as a whole, this entire archetype needs to be retooled. I'd be very surprised if they gave us land similar to Dryad Arbor. It would be it would be a break from normal for them to not give us some form of dual land of the fall. Yeah, the brawl event seemed interesting. I'm excited to actually build brawl decks once rotation happens. 
I assume they're just taking Bantu's Reckoning here. They seem to be targeting all of my interaction. I assume their plan is just to, like, try and run me down before I can, like, before I can kill them. They don't really want to take Larig. Because I can just get Larig back with Gorio's Vengeance. Morning, Jay. Happy Friday. We're going to get fetches. I feel like I'd take that bet. Fetches create pretty bad gameplay in Paper Standard, but maybe maybe we're far enough off from Paper that, that that's just not a thing they're going to worry about anymore. I kind of I kind of hope we have a non-rotating format. I kind of hope Historic isn't a fetch shock format. I would I would prefer it if Historic didn't involve fetches and shocks. All right, so we have two copies of Anger of the Gods in our deck that I would love to draw. Otherwise, we're dead in two here. Uh, Neo Neonate also kills them, right? Because Neonate would let us ditch Lair Egg, which we can then Gorio's Vengeance back. Yeah, I think I think the blue splash is pretty necessary, Bearded Beer Time. I think the the Shoal package has outlived its lifetime now, with uh. With the loss of looting, you need to just be like an Emrakul, an Emrakul Crystal Brand deck, probably. And like, it looks like we're getting a little unlucky in these games that we're losing. But the flip side of that is, we just don't have that much selection in this deck anymore. So we are just at the mercy of our top decks, hoping things are going to work out. The match, the match that we won, we ran a little bit good, and we were able to get there, but. On, on average, I think a lot of our games are going to look like this now without Faithless Looting, so just need to retool this. Uh, I don't know offhand mittens. My, my best advice to you when it comes to building mana bases is however many lands you think you need is probably not enough. Also, play more utility lands. My, my general advice is... If you're not sure if you should add another land to your deck, add a utility land. Add a land that's going to sometimes be a spell. All right, so apparently I can't delete that plug because I'm past the character limit. That's wild. Morning, Daryl. <clears throat> Maybe I want even more interaction here. Maybe I'm supposed to cut. I left in some of these pieces of fast mana and it's possible I should have cut them. I think green black rock's fine. I personally am not a huge fan of the play patterns of a lot of the discard-based mid-range decks in Modern. But if you like casting Inquisition and Thoughtseize, I think Green Black Rock is an excellent deck to be doing that in. Is Super losing Gorio's Vengeance here or potentially Fatal Push depending on what the texture of the rest of their hand is?
Hey, thanks for the prime support, Hunter. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, yeah, I'm going to push this here. Because if I draw like a Night's Whisper or Ransack the Lab next turn, I want to cast it. And I definitely want to get rid of the bub. All right, we're one land off of casting this uh, Larig. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah, there was a 5-0 there was a five -o is it Phoenix list with is it Terminant. News, news of that archetype's death was likely greatly exaggerated. I don't have I don't have the answers, Zara. So unlike unlike a lot of people that produce magic content, I generally try to shy away from putting out really strong opinions on things that I don't know about. We're just we're just trying things. I can tell you things that I've tried that don't feel good, like for instance, the shoal package in here feels really bad with how faithless looting. But as to what exactly is the answer to fixing that those issues, I I don't know. I don't I don't have an answer for you. Yeah, that's great. All right. All right, if they don't have another discard spell here, I get to breach uh yeah, I get to breach Gristlebrand next turn. And kill kill Liliana and draw a group full of cards here. Which I think I think what we're about to do here, if they don't have a Thought Caesar and Inquisition, is what you want this deck to be doing moving forward. Rather than shoaling people, you want to be like, all right, I'm gonna just put the 7-7 seven, seven into play. I'm gonna attack, but more importantly, I'm gonna gas up. So I'm not killing you the turn I combo, but I'm getting set up in an overwhelming manner for the following turn. Now, their last card could be Path to Exile here. Yep. Get to do that. Get to put this into play tapped. Pass the turn. Probably ditching Collective Brutality here. Assuming they don't play like uh, Tide Hollow Skuller. Weird that they would cycle that before plusing Liliana. Yeah, gener Generator of Servants is a sweet card. We've played that in... We played we played a lair egg build of this deck when Faithless Looting was still legal, and it played that card in it. Alright, the untapped land here is actually a good draw, because it means I can ransack into a world spine worm or a gristle brand and through the breach them. Uh that's a Gorio's Vengeance, so they're dead, right? Yeah, I take I take the Gorio's Vengeance. Oh, oh wait, that is not how that works. Oh, I'm dumb. I was I was thinking the other ones were gonna go to my hand too, but they're going to my graveyard. I'm really stupid. Hmm. All right, so we're still we're still in an okay spot. So I get to anger and kill. Their Campbell and go to four, and then Gorio's Vengeance Larag kills the Liliana. Yeah, I could have, I could have, I should have just taken the worm. I, I was thinking the worm was going to be in my hand too, because it's early.
Look, I'm not telling you it makes sense. I'm just telling you where my brain went. My brain, my brain saw the Gorio's Vengeance the Worm and went to, I'm going to get to attack for 21. Larig dies or is put in exile. You may put it. Oh, this puts it. Yes. Yes. I would like to use the raised boars ability. That. Okay. That's sweet. So we've got a pig. We've got a pig in two turns. Actually, I could pig. I could pig out next turn, right? With the, with the neonate. That has us dead in two, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, still dead in two with the flashback though, right? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely should have taken the worm, breached the worm, had five fives, and they'd have died to the five fives. That's what it is. No, that's not how Gorio's Vengeance works. Gorio's Vengeance only brings back legendary creatures. So we need to hit a Gristlebrand or a Worm here to put into play with this. Or an Anger of the Gods or a Bantu's Reckoning. We've died. So I might have won that game if I'd have taken the Worm instead of the Gorio's Vengeance and have five fives left over after killing the Liana. They'd have had a Campbell in play still, but their cards were just Lingering Souls and then Campbell, right? So I think I would have... I think the Worms would have killed them. I mean, to be fair, even if you have uh, have higher internet, reading the text on Magic Online cards is difficult. It's real tiny. I don't know. I don't know that I'd call that record as meaningless. So if I, if I breach worm, I'm at four and then, so, so to think, think about what happened. So if I breach the worm, I kill the Liliana, I have five fives. They have a two, three. The next turn I attack them for, I guess it's just 10, 15, right? Yeah. The way, the way they drew, they'd have died. Yeah, that, that game, and again, like, that game's useful from a testing perspective to me because it kind of reinforces the idea of that, like, all right, I don't really want to be on this nourishing show plan anymore. I want to be raised boring people, I think. Also, like, if I'm not on the nourishing show plan, that world spine worm on that ransack the lab cast probably ends up being an Emmercool. And if I breach Emmercool, I certainly win there because it would wrath their entire board, including all of their lands. So, like, there, there's that to think about as well. So I would, I would be surprised if there's not some kind of competitive Gorio's Vengeance through the Breach deck in this format, but I definitely don't think it's this, this construction of it. Hey, Mushy Sasquatch. Thanks for the three quarters of a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, we're on the draw. Let's draw a Gristlebrand in one of our first two draws so we can kill them on two. No, we've not played a Grixis version, Frags. I would. Grixis would be on my list to try with Jace. Jace is sweet with Gorio's Vengeance. And uh, Lair Egg would definitely be something I'd want to try. Like four Lair Egg, four Through the Breach, some Generator Servants. Generator, Generator Servants, a hot ticket. Put it mulligan to five. Harden scales, sure. I 
Weld away, little jar, weld away. Come weld away, come weld away, come weld away with me. Do, 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 do. What's that? <sighs> Was that a good draw chat? Can anybody, can anybody out there let me know if that was, uh, if that was a good one? Is the, is the jury out? I'm on uncertain, uncertain on the, the power level of that top deck. We could just get folks at home to weigh in. I'd appreciate it. It was passable, yeah. So again, I think I'm just gonna cut this package and try and board into something closer to what I think something like this could look like in a more ideal setting. So I definitely want a little bit more interaction here. Knight's Whisper kinda sucks against an aggro deck and I'll trim, uh, <sighs> I'll trim a collective brutality. That seems fine. It's not super good interaction here. All right, let's do it. This is this is as I close to ideal as I think we can get with the seventy five I've registered. I'm just pulling off that shoal plan. This is the last match in this league. We're gonna do a second modern league this morning, like we're gonna be doing every day between now and when rotation happens in three weeks. We're going to kick the tires on some Sahili evolution. That was a old favorite on the channel for a while. Going to see how that feels with Stoneforge Mystic in it. Spent some brain power last night updating that. Since you started doing more modern, how have your numbers been? Uh, the modern numbers are still pretty consistently about, let's let's make up numbers, uh, I, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 60% less than when, when we do standard content. We did we did an all modern day Wednesday and comparing the all, I, actually, I could actually just look at, look at the Twitch, Twitch gives you such great metrics. So my all modern stream Wednesday averaged uh, about 700 viewers and my modern into standard streams on Tuesday and Thursday averaged uh, 900 and 950 thereabouts. So I guess that's, I guess that's about 30% or so. I don't know. And at the end, at the end of the day, the viewer count, the viewer count isn't everything. Like being higher, being higher in the magic category on Twitch helps for discoverability to a degree. But at at the end of the day, people subscribing and people, uh, people sending in donation deck lists, like, are the bulk of my income. So I'm not that worried about it. It's not, it's not lower enough to the point where like I'm gonna stop doing two a day. keep that yeah yeah the, the reality of the situation is like a lot of my newer audience i've picked up doesn't doesn't watch modern or magic online and with good reason they're just interested in magic arena like i don't i don't blame them by any means um folks folks like caleb like caleb's like the gold standard for moto content like he gets like 1500 to 2000 people when he does moto but he's, he spent a long time building that base and he's like the only person that hits those numbers on that client. Like even, even Kenji frequently only has like a thousand or 1500 if he's lucky on, on Magic Online. Uh, adding Modern X is a minimum of 20, 2500 bits. Man, so if I would have, I bottomed a World Spine Worm on our Mulligan. If we would have kept the World Spine Worm, we'd have attacked them for 21 this turn. 
like things to think about. It's a lot of welding jars. Well, you know, better, better lucky than good, etc., etc. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Uh, they're they're technically not dead, right? They uh they get to go to two. This is, this is notably, I notably, I'm not breaching the worm. So because I'm not breaching the worm, I, it comes back to my hand so that I don't get tokens. Oh, and they get to regenerate this. Yeah, that's a big deal. So they're going to two. If they've been playing a deck where they took damage from their mana... I am going to tuck this back in. That might be wrong. If they hit a land here, they get to pay. F if they hit a land, they kill us very quickly. Well, that's a tap land. It kills us a little bit slower. Because this paying four puts three counters on this, which is a big deal. I have fatal push and a breed here, though, which is nice. They draw another X spell. Oh, I should definitely let this attack. I should I should let this attack first. Because they might they might go to pump it. Because regenerating removes it from combat. In addition to tapping it. Yeah, they might they might just pump this and six ball us here and save their welding jar. Oh, they're welding jarring to save it, sure. Land. Yeah. You get I get to abrade it here. That was that was the plan. So this turns off their mox opal, so I'm going to eleven. I believe the top card of my deck's another Larig, though, because I tucked the other one in, so that's not a great scene for us. We could definitely brick off here and die. And, like, again, imagine if this World Spine Worm, when we Larig plus World Spine Worm, had been an Emrakul. Well, I guess Emrakul ends up being the same, right? Because when you Emrakul off of Larig, you don't get an Annihilator trigger. Arcbound worker, good god. One mana, eight, eight, go. All right, we're dead. Yikes. I thought they banned Haggah, great. Right? <laughs> Alright, let's play game the third, see if we can get lucky. Our draw was pretty okay, but trip trip hardened scales is tough. It's tough not to crack. Do -do 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 Yes, yes, that is that is exactly exactly correct, and yeah. Sorry, sorry I missed it the first time. Those are those are the three options. 
Basic, basically $25 in my direction, sliced up however you would like to slice it up. Someone posted a meme card in Discord that was an adventure with Faithful Suiting on one half and Hagak on the other. That's great. Just perfect. Cash in an envelope to your P.O. box is fine. Yes, definitely. You have to wait until I get the cash, but that would also work. Uh, and then remind me again, Enya, because it's early. What are we what are we adding with that one? I know we talked about it. Where's uh right? Got it. Get that added to the list after we're after we're offline today. Would love to ransack the lab. Yikes. Uh, I think I'm just taking Bloodstained Mire. The good configuration. Is there, what's the, what is the industry standard accepted good configuration for that archetype? Yeah, the grinding station deck we played was an Urza deck, but that was different. That was uh, a deck was kind of fundamentally different than than the Urza archetype as a whole. Another sure, twenty seven months, Rapner. I appreciate that. Welcome. Yeah, World Spine Worm sounds great. Pairs pairs nicely with my boar gun. Perfect. I will grab exactly that one. This fatal push is an instant, and my opponent's deck, generally speaking, doesn't have counter spells, he says before he gets veiled of summered. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to fatal push this metallic mimic until they go to cast something. I guess the fact that I'm fatal pushing this turn means I can't Larig off of Simeon Spirit Guide next turn unless I draw a land now though. Which is kinda relevant. So I do I do just want to get my pig into play as soon as possible. Well then. I'm gonna bottom that. I don't really need another worm. Pass here. Uh, the problem is, I think if I tap out, and this is the issue, I think if I tap out for Laric next turn, I die to Ink Moth Nexus. With the Arcbound Ravager they have in hand. Because they can play Ravager here, make another Servo. Yeah, I think though, I think when I sequence with the Fatal Push, that was bad. Yeah, because this is this is worth two counters, three, four, five, six, and then they get seven, eight 
for making animation module tokens. Well, I guess they have to block. Okay, Gorio's Vengeance is great because I get to attack with it this turn now, right? Which makes them have to block. And that's a Gristlebrand. Alright, so we get to floop the pig into play here. Oh, ho. We're halfway there. Oh, ho. Living on a prayer. Take my hand. We'll make it, I swear. Oh, ho. Do, 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 do. Pigging on a prayer. This little piggy went wee, 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 all the way home. He's right, he's riding the board, God, yep. And then we've got angers and fatal pushes and a braids oh my so hopefully we don't die this turn uh past priority well, are they're gonna try and make this big enough to trade with the boar god in which case, we'll draw some cards and abrade it. They might, they might just try and make this a 7-7. Seven, seven. Because they can, they can eat all these servos, which makes their, their thing a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I, think, I think that's their plan. They're just looking for a removal spell here, like that one. Like that one right there. I would like to destroy this. She, she, sha! Alright, alright, shiggity swooty. We coming for that booty. That sweet, sweet Arc Ravager booty. We almost made a terrible series of mistakes. And then we hit an absurd series of top decks. Hit him, hit him with the pocket sand. All right, I think I'm going to take another hit here. I don't think I can die from 12. Famous, famous last words. Don't think I can die from 12. So, pass. Exile Larig. I would love to tuck Larig into my deck. Gristlebrand comes back to my hand. Let's discard a bunch to hand size. All right. Bronx to me. Thank you for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome. This is, this is the last match. We went two and three. And I really feel like the couple of matches that we won really, really highlighted the this plan not being good anymore. So in, in my mind... The Grishel brand deck, as I've played, um, historically speaking, while Faithless Looting was around, is no more. This is this is not a plan that's worth doing. It's just it's just too much clutter without Faithless Looting to allow you to churn through it when you're not ready for it. And I think there's 
two base avenues I would explore with this archetype. The first is staying pure red black and playing four boar gods along with Emmercool as your other threat to pair with it. I also would prep maybe want to try something like Generator Servant, which for those for those not familiar, Generator Servant effectively turns Larig into a through the breach because it gives it haste. And Generator Servant on two lets you cast through the breach and raise boar on three. Raise boar gets haste on three, which is nice. Another direction I think is potentially worth exploring with this archetype is I would want to pivot and look at the Grixis build where you get um, Jay's Friend's Prodigy, Charter Course, Is It Charm, potentially uh, Serum Visions, other, other card selection things that can make up for that void that's been left by not having by not having faithful looting, I think I think there's merit to testing in in both of those directions if you're looking for a Gorio's Vengeance deck in a post faithful looting modern world. All right, we're gonna roll along to our second modern deck of the day now. We're gonna play some 